Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on demonstrating leadership across your roles. This is part of the Boost Your Career webinars that are co-sponsored by Sue Mentors and Tulane University. Today's format is a little different. We're having a case study. You'll be hearing from me, Sue Griffey, with the overall topic. And then you'll hear from Dr. Lizanne Brown, who will actually discuss her experiences with demonstrating leadership. Let's start with leadership. This is a common issue for people moving into 10 to 15 years of work who are getting more senior in their career and needing to demonstrate the leadership that they've been doing. It usually happens in your career path that you start with doing some kind of technical work, then you may lead, manage and lead a group of the same kinds of technical experts, and then get to higher level leading that may be even at the organizational level level and above. So I wanted to go back to the level five leadership concept that Jim Collins, who wrote Good to Great, a very famous um, book that's worth uh, reading, and his five levels of leadership. I really think leadership begins at level three, as we'll see in the next slide. Here's a different view of the five levels from Jim Collins. And what he calls level three, the competent manager, to me is where the competent leader starts to begin. People that are at this level are beginning to have budgetary access and control. They have a team of people and um, manage them and lead them to a pro uh, productivity of some kind and often have a seat at the table, at least with the next level of leadership above them. And so I put in red on the left that I think this begins competent leader and then you move on up. To go back to framing this a little bit, level three begins to change you into a leader. And part of what happens in uh, taking on the role of a leader um, is what we call role realignment. And as you can see from the thumbnail in the bottom left, we've covered this also in a previous webinar in a little more detail than today. But basically the definition of this is the change that you need to make to function in your new role. So what you're doing is really adopting and living the new behaviors of what you're hired to do. Mental, a mental image, increased confidence, not just applying maybe new skills you've learned, um, or new ways of managing. So let's think about how and in what way it comes um, to be that you're um, doing some leadership maybe at level three, but you aren't necessarily describing how you are leading. And this comes with role realignment moving into becoming a competent leader. On the left, two mismatched socks. Well, you could also look at them as two different kinds of socks. So maybe this is where you have aspects of leadership in different jobs. You've done some of this sporadically, but either you don't do it routinely or you don't acknowledge it, a situation where you're not necessarily matched up to what you're doing. On the right, again, I know it chose a dramatic photo. Maybe you're doing this role, but you're not really telling that you did it. And we'll be going into more detail on this. Here are the kinds of situations where you need to describe this leadership, and it seems to come uh, front and center when you're looking at getting a new job or a promotion, if you're moving into a new or a different technical area, or if you're moving to a new location and also trying to get a job. Sometimes it even comes when opportunities in an area uh, that you live in are limited and you're trying to move into um, a job either in a new location or in the same location. Mentees that I've worked with where this is happening to them almost uniformly tell me they've already started reaching out to friends and colleagues immediately. The problem is that people that are 10 to 15 years into their career and oftentimes in a job where they've been two to three years at least, don't necessarily keep their professional presence up to date. And maybe networking has also fallen by the wayside. So they're 
not necessarily, they haven't been necessarily keeping an eye on what's been happening in the um, external environment, other potential opportunities. So I'd like to talk about what the basis of your leadership presence needs to be. And that is these four activities, which we'll go through briefly, and then you'll see more detail and specific examples when Lizanne describes how she worked through this. First, you need to tell your story. It's very easy for people 10 to 15 years in their uh, career to portray what they've done technically. So they often will talk about technical accomplishments and say, well, here it is. This is how I've done it but they're not describing what they've done in leadership. So they need you need to weave a story for people. You also need to make sure that each job you've had, especially where you've had leadership opportunities and experience, you need to make sure that those descriptions of those jobs describe the leading, not the technical work you've done. And if this was as simple as following the Google search and looking at these um, six, uh, phrases, seven phrases for leadership skills. It's not just tailoring your resume. You have other webinars you can look at about tailoring your resume, but the key is you need to know what kinds of positions are you looking at, but also what is the language that you should be talking to effectively convey how you're a leader. The third area is increasing your leadership visibility. LinkedIn gives you a great opportunity. It gives you now the opportunity to put in a headline. And for me, they've actually suggested I use the most recent um, mentoring program that I've joined. I will not be changing that, but you can see that you can choose a headline that will help you increase your visibility. And Lizanne's gonna go into even more detail on LinkedIn soon. Also, you need to restart your networking and Again, we have a webinar for that. So think about increasing your visibility as twofold. And the last is making sure you use an outside perspective for feedback. This isn't just the mentoring coach that you can work with the, the left-hand image on your professional presence to make sure that your written documents, your LinkedIn profile are up to date. You actually need to practice this for an interview, for networking situations, to make sure that you're clearly conveying what you've done in leadership. So I'd like to introduce you now again to Dr. Lee Zan Brown, who's going to discuss her experiences, her before and after examples for each of the four steps I just went through. Lizanne, it's thank all you yours. Too. Okay, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to um, talk about my uh, story. Um, it's still unfolding as all of our stories are, um, but I'm gonna give a little background first um, on uh, where I started out my career. Um, so I landed in uh, New Orleans uh, 30 years ago, actually in 1989 to do a master's in public health uh, and then stayed on and did a PhD. Um, and completed that in 1995. I stayed at Tulane um, as a uh, research faculty. I had uh, throughout my, uh, both my master's and my doctoral degrees had uh, increasingly focused on program evaluation and stayed on and uh, conducted and worked in the area of program evaluation uh, internationally um, at Tulane. Um, until uh, from 1995 until 2007. And during that time, it was, you know, again, focused on program evaluation of family planning, reproductive health and HIV AIDS programs, mostly in Sub-Saharan Africa. I had been mostly um, in a technical role, although as uh, time went on, increasingly took on uh, responsibilities, including leading some teams and taking on some initial leadership um, roles. After uh, Hurricane Katrina, um, so I, this was kind of a, both a personal and professional time change, I, I moved to uh, the Louisiana Public Health Institute um, to take a position as the Director of Evaluation and Research. And while there was certainly a lot of technical aspects of that role, it really meant moving from a um, 
from a solely technical focus to much more of a generalist focus. So I was no longer focused on one specific public health area in terms of program evaluation. But in addition, I was taking on much more of a leadership role within the organization. And I was in that role for 12 years uh, until just this past um, summer. Um, but about a year ago, my family was considering a, um, a big change, both in terms of um, location, but I knew that also meant um, a potential professional change. Um, so I was, uh, I knew this was going to be a challenge. Uh, and so I uh, really felt like I needed to start right away um, and take uh, time to do that work. So as I just mentioned, I was now uh, 20 plus years into my career. I was in a leadership role and I knew that those kind of roles are um, harder to, to get. You know, they're, they're not as um, plentiful as perhaps entry level positions. And I knew it was gonna take time to make that change, especially because I was also making a geographic change. Um, so I anticipated some of the challenges that needed to um, be addressed, which is why I thought it was really critical to get an outside perspective. And I knew Sue already from our um, time at Tulane together, um, and I knew she was uh, had started her Sue Mentors um, uh, business, and so I immediately contacted her and said, I need help. I don't know how to articulate all of the work that I have been doing. Um, you know, after, again, I've been on the job for many years, busy just doing the job, but had not stepped back to articulate, um, particularly the leadership aspects of my um, position. And also I, you know, had been busy, as I said, busy working um, hard. And so while I had kept my CV updated chronologically in terms of the positions and publications, it was in a very old style and it did not at all articulate um, my career focus at this stage in my life and did not articulate um, my leadership um, accomplishments. So having a coach really helped me think through um, what my current skill set is, uh, particularly around leadership and how to articulate articulate that in a narrative uh, biographical paragraph format. So it, it took a while. It was challenging to um, to figure out how best to articulate, and I had to I had to think a lot about uh, what what I had actually been doing is particularly from a leadership perspective. I had up until that point really not spent much time thinking about how to describe um, the leadership role I had been in for the, the past 12 years and how it had evolved over that time. Not only was I leading a te technical team of evaluators, but I was also an active member of the LPHI leadership team and had contributed to several organizational changes related to organizational structure and human um, resource management. And in addition, I was spending a lot of time mentoring junior staff, um, as well as uh, student interns, many of whom were from Tulane. Um, and none of that experience was reflected in my CV. So, I felt that it was really important to first update um, my professional presence and to redo my CV. So this took quite a bit of time and it was it was challenging because it, it um, took me a while to figure out how to um, even describe what I had been doing because I'd just been busy doing it. Uh, and so, over time, it took it took a few months um, to rework um, my uh, description of my role. And here you can see um, on the the left box um, is how I was initially started describing it, which really still focused on my technical work um, and accomplishments, 
um, but really was still focused on leading evaluation work as opposed to leading at an organizational level. And you can see the box on the left, um, how I focused on my technical work um, and accomplishments um, and, um, sorry, and, and started really describing um, the leadership experience um, that was specific to my position and role. Um, so I was a senior leader and manager who had directed programs and also really um, adjusting the, the verb um, that, you know, making it more active um, as opposed to just, um, and, and making it more doing verbs as opposed to just uh, more passive. So this um, next uh, slide just shows um, how I, I went about reframing my um, leadership descriptions um, in my specific jobs. Um, so specifically around um, the, my position at LPHI um, as the Director of Evaluation and Research um, on the left um, doesn't even mention leading at all, just talks about my specific responsibilities. Um, whereas uh, once I reframed it on the right, um, I articulated uh, specific examples of the leadership aspects of that role, right? So these two boxes are the same job, but, but focusing on very different aspects of the job and the box on the right really focusing on the leadership um, components of that job. So leading one of seven portfolios, leading a, um, being a member of uh, the leadership team and, and around specific um, activities in that role, uh, securing funding, uh, leading staff professional development. So once I had my, um, I had articulated um, my uh, accomplishments um, and my vision and as a leader, I felt that I, at that point I was ready for um, the job search. Um, and I really think it's it's incredibly important to do that preparation work before actually doing uh, an active job search. I mean, it's always a good idea to see what's out there, but in terms of actually applying, I think you it's, it's really important to have um, those, uh, descriptions in place first. So once I had um, that language ready, I was able to, uh, I was ready to put it on my LinkedIn profile and to also redo my LinkedIn profile. I updated my picture, um, included all that new language. Um, and then the other thing I did was subscribe to the LinkedIn premium service, um, which you can, Generally, they'll give you at least one month for free. Sometimes you can find um, uh, other uh, opportunities for more than a month, but I found it worthwhile paying for the service for uh, until I actually secured a position. Um, and in my case, it was critical because uh, it made me more visible to recruiters, which is ultimately how I uh, got the position that I'm in now. So here is my uh, revamped and updated uh, electronic pre uh, presence, um, primarily on LinkedIn. Um, and you can see the language that um, came from the bio paragraph that, that uh, we saw in the previous slide um, that, show, that describes um, that I'm a senior leader and manager who's directed um, global and domestic health programs. Um, I've led and managed staff, um, et cetera. So once I had my electronic presence ready, I felt uh, the, ready to uh, start reaching out to my network. Um, and I really wanted to reactivate um, the international health network that I had built while I was um, working at Tulane um, in the late 90s and, and through 2007. And I had not really been in touch with many of those people since then. So that took some time. Um, and I did that through email, through some personal phone calls, but also through LinkedIn. Um, I reached out to a lot of people. Um, the premium 
service also lets you um, provides a certain number of free um, uh, what they call in um, insight um, contacts um, so you can message people um, that you couldn't otherwise uh, do um, through the free service um, and and I was able to um, really reconnect with a lot of um, a lot of my former colleagues. The next um, thing uh, that is that Sue referenced that's really important is writing and blogging. Um, and I, um, it was uh, ch a challenge to do that because it took time and took uh, me to uh, really reflect on what I had learned from um, from specific projects. Um, in this case, um, I wrote a blog about a health impact assessment. Um, that I uh, had led um, at LPHI, but specifically how we had engaged um, the community affected by uh, a proposed power plant um, as part of the, the health impact assessment and how that community uh, kept the, um, the project and the, the issue alive uh, within the city government in New Orleans um, to this day. Um, and how that work um, really galvanized um, their um, activism um, around this issue. Um, another important um, point about doing this kind of blogging is that those articles stay on your profile and they don't get lost in the feed. So if you just post something, it'll appear in your feed, um, but then it, it gets uh, very quickly um, move down the feed, whereas if you post something on your um, on your page, then it stays there um, and for people to see um, much more easily. So once I had um, redone my CV, uh, redone my electronic presence, started networking, started job searching, um, writing, I um, felt much more confident um, in uh, actively looking for jobs. Um, my family had already made the decision that we were moving to Denver, Colorado, uh, and were actively um, in the process of, of moving while I was doing the job search. Um, and um, I literally was interviewing uh, while we were on the road and ended up making a side trip to do um, an in-person interview um, for the position that I ultimately secured with um, Apt Associates. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, that job um, was uh, initially um, uh, found my way, found its way to me through a recruiter. Um, so I was contacted by a recruiter um, about a position in apt um, and then I followed up and we had there were several interviews it was it was a um, you know a process that took a few months so it, it, another really important challenge is around this it, it takes time it takes time not only to prepare yourself but also the actual job search process um, takes time particularly at a leadership level um, but ultimately, I have now been in the job for um, almost two months um, and been in Denver for about the same amount of time. I'm still you know, getting oriented to the position and um, learning about um, the company and how I can best um, fit in to um, and, and contribute from a leadership perspective. I will, um, so thank you very much. I, um, I'm, I'm gonna pass it back to Sue. Thank you, Lizanne. That was really made my uh, my lead in come to life because you've you've lived it and been doing it. So it makes a great segue into our summary. As much as you can, keep your professional presence updated. But especially as you move into leadership, it's critical to make sure that you're uh, telling a story that's effectively conveying your leading. Build your or rebuild your professional presence, because as you heard Lizanne say, it's critical for a job search situation. You don't want people to see a LinkedIn profile with no picture, with not much description of anything, and you certainly won't be found by recruiters and hiring managers. Most important, I think, is you always need to lead with your leading and not your technical story, and that's a learned habit that you're going to make as a leader. 
And finally, using an external perspective, a coach, a mentor, a colleague can ha help you make sure you're effectively describing your leadership, but also help you practice using it so it becomes much more natural to you to use. There are a couple resources I feel had a pretty good discussion of how you um, express leadership on your resume, and you'll see these here um, that you might want to follow up more in addition to the other webinars I've mentioned. So thank you very much for attending today. As always, don't forget to check out our channel for many other Boost Your Career webinars and other professional development webinars from Tulane Alumni Career Services. And please contact Sarah or me, Sue, for more information on this topic or any ideas you have about another webinar you'd like.